Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start the regular meeting for June the 7th. We have the uh, invocation by uh, Commissioner Keller, Pledge of Allegiance by um, Commissioner Firstner, and then the roll call. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this evening, we ask your blessing on our city. We ask also a blessing on the commission that they make the wise decisions as our city grows. We ask a blessing on all of our students as they uh, go get out of school now. Uh, give them a, a good, relaxing summer vacation. We'll let them come back to uh, ready to learn in the, in the fall. We ask a blessing on all of our uh, citizens as they travel this summer. Keep them safe. Bring them home safely to us. Let them come back relaxed. As always, Lord, we ask a blessing on our first responders. Keep those who keep us safe. Keep them safe as well. And also, Lord, a blessing on our military. Wherever they are in the world, keep them safe and bring them home to us. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Commissioner Grogan? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Mayor Johnson? Here. Commissioner Firstner? Here. Commissioner Keller? Here. All right. We're going to have now have the presentations and proclamations. Presentation tonight for Officer of the First Quarter to Officer Bill Richardson by the CACOPD board members. Yes, I'm Victoria Laney, and I have the pleasure of being the chair of the Citizen Advisory Council for the Ocoee Police Department. One of the things we do to serve the city and the uh, police officers who serve us is to select an officer of the quarter. And so it's always a difficult job because so many of our officers do amazing things every quarter. Uh, but this, uh, this quarter, you know, it, it just we have just an outstanding selection here with Officer Richardson. Officer Richardson was nominated by Detective Walsh and Corporal Lewis. And he was nominated because this quarter he responded to a call for service about a stolen car. During his encounter with the suspect in that crime, the suspect threatened to kill herself with a 10-inch butcher knife. Now, she wasn't just threatening herself. She was threatening everyone on the scene. Officer Richardson utilized his crisis intervention training and all the skill and knowledge he has as a police officer to calm the situation. He was able to gain the trust of the suspect, he was able to calm her, and he convinced her to put down the knife. Officer Richardson then made sure the, the suspect received the mental health services she needed. Um, Corporal Lewis in the nomination and at the time said that tensions were running very high. The situation was very volatile. We see all the time, uh, you know, such a, a 10 inch butcher knife with a lunge. You know, his life was on the line during this encounter. And um, there was a significant risk that the subject could have harmed herself, or Officer Richardson, or others at the scene. And so the situation could have easily degraded to the point where he would have been justified in using lethal force to protect himself and the public. However, because he was calm, he was patient, and he had negotiation skills he's been trained with and is finally honed during his tenure as a police officer, he was able to prevent injuries to anyone, including the suspect. Other officers on the scene, including Officer Stevens, Officer Clark, and Officer Hedges, also exhibited patience and professionalism in a situation that was extremely tense. Um, they, Corporal Lewis believed that 
all of the officers working together as a team contributed to a safe conclusion for all. Corporal Lewis stated that he was proud to have been on the scene that night and he wanted to bring attention in particular to offer Officer Richardson's performance and being the one who was uh, negotiating so well with the suspect as well as the other officers who had his back and who assisted him to save all the lives there that night. Detective Walsh stated that with all the shootings taking place all over the country, this is a situation that could have ended with several different outcomes. Thanks to Officer Richardson's actions, this incident ended safely for everyone in the scene and the subject. Officers Richard, Officer Richardson's actions showed care, compassion, and a duty to protect life. For these reasons, we respectfully nominate him for Officer of the Quarter. Now there's more. <laughs> there's even more than that. This is another Okoe police lieutenant who talked about his other sustained performance throughout the entire quarter. It is so hard to pick these. And um, very often we look not just for one single amazing, life-saving, dramatic incidents, but sustained performance throughout the quarter. So for example, on March 5th this quarter, Officer Richardson sent his immediate supervisor several ideas he had about trying to prevent vehicle burglaries in the district where he is assigned. And he had noticed an increase in vehicle burglaries, and he um, had some ideas. And one was to recommend that the uh, department use digital traffic signal board. You may have actually seen this out on the road to post a message to citizens. And this is the message, and we should all remember this all the time, whether it's on a signal board or not. One is, say, prevent theft, lock your car door, and this is a national slogan, lock it or lose it, lock it or lose it. And so R Officer Richardson also suggested an excellent location for the digital sign to be placed. And so Lieutenant Wagner and Lieutenant Satterley responded to Officer Richardson saying, hey, good idea. Um, we'll work on getting the digital sign to state what he suggested and then place the digital sign at the location he suggested. Within a day, the digital sign was put in place and due to Officer Richardson's suggestion, um, Someone saw the sign, responded to the sign, and reported a, a suspect trying to get in her car. And she stated the reason she did that was because she had seen the car. I mean, she had seen the digital sign and um, said, you know, I'm going to report this now. Because a lot of times you just, don't, you just don't bother. We should all bother. It's important. And so during this quarter, Officer Richardson has demonstrated he's a well-rounded officer who can appropriately act at an in-progress situation, and he has the ability to think ahead, plan strategically, and help prevent uh, crime. And so he's a valuable asset to the Okoye Police Department, and that's why we selected him. And it was uh, so many good officers, so many good officers, but we selected him as officer of the first quarter.
they'll have a special ribbon he'll be wearing to, to demonstrate he has the honor. There's a couple of other nice things in there too. So, all right, thank you so much. We'll thank see you. you next quarter. Thank you. All right, staff report. Nope, I'm sorry, we're gonna back up and go to comments from citizens that we have. If it's on the agenda, we'll wait till it's on the agenda, but if it's not, then we'll go ahead and address it. We have a couple different items here. The first one's from, uh, the name is Jan Manson, 2420 Johal Bay Drive, come up to the podium. That may be for number 11, Mayor. Huh? That may be for number 11. Is it a number 11? Yes. I'm sorry. It is number 11? Yes. Yeah. All right, just hang on, you don't, you'll have to wait a while then. <laughs> All right. All right. Mindy Hungerford, give us your name, address. You need to give us your name and your address. My name is Mindy Hungerford, and I live at 213 Hortsville Drive, Winter Garden, Florida. And I'm here on behalf of the um, McKee Street Merchants Association. And we help plan the Ocoee Family Fest. I see a lot of cute faces here that I recognize from there, so thanks for coming. We are here today to um, ask if it would be possible for us to move our event from Thursdays to Saturday. We think it would be um, better for vendors. We would, we would be able to get more vendors and more people in the community would be able to come as they wouldn't have work the next day, children wouldn't have school the next day, kids wouldn't have sports events and things like that. Um, our first event was incredibly successful with over 500 people. However, um, it was St. Patty's Day that day and all the kids were out of school the next day. So um, we're thinking that maybe a Saturday may be better for us. We're also now a 501c3, so that's really exciting. Um, and we're also asking if the city could help us promote in any way possible, whether through Facebook, maybe link our page with yours, um, send out a mailer with the water bill, things of that nature. We're going to be printing banners to put up on McKee Street um, and small flyers to put around town and help promote the event. Anybody else want to talk? No, this is just my posse. They're just helping me out. I was really nervous. You peeps. All right. Any comments from the commissioners? Uh, no, well, the advertising is going on right now. It's on TV, so that's good. Yay! Thank you. Uh, and then we replay that all the time, and it's on YouTube. Thank you. So all our commission meetings are live on TV. Awesome. Uh, I, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any questions I can answer Anybody about the else? event? No problem with it. No, I think Saturday would be better, quite yeah. frankly. Yeah. What's the hours going to be on Saturday, same hours? Yes, from 4 to 8. All right, do we need to, Bob, do we need to uh, vote on the date change or do we just consent? I don't think so. I, I think a consensus would be fine. I think what they've been doing is uh, putting a permit application through each month and it, and it goes through all the departments and we sign off on it. So um, as long as you don't have an issue with it, uh, I think it's fine. If you want to send any one of us, mm -hmm. we can read it during our um, announcements. Mm -hmm. And we'll be happy to read that it's coming up. Is this yeah. once a month? Yes, sir. It'll be every, it'll be every Try, month. You hook it up right the uh, meeting right before it's going to happen. Yes, sir. Give give any one of us. I'll be happy to do it. Give us give us notice that it's coming up, and we'll read it off. Thank you. I appreciate that. So it's going to start on June the twenty fifth. Yes, sir. Okay. Great. All right. All right. Everything thank good. you. All right. Thank you. All right. So there's no more. No more comments from citizens. Anybody else in the audience from the citizens have any comments? If not, we'll move to the uh, staff report. The only thing I have, Mayor, is um, we're requesting to pull number 10 of the consent agenda off this evening. We do not have a copy of the final developer agreement, so we'll go ahead and bring that back at the next meeting on the 21st. All right, we're going to pull. Pull it off the agenda. Pull off number 10. Item yes. number 10, approval of the second amendment to the development agreement for arbors at Crown Point. Mm -hmm. All right. That'll be, what is it? It'll be the 21st June. Do you need a vote, Scott, on that? Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do a vote to continue item number 10 to the June 21st, 2016 meeting. Uh, motion to move it. Second. 
Motion made by Commissioner Keller to move the item 10 to June the 21st, seconded by Commissioner Wilson. No problems, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Any more, Rob? No, sir. Nothing. All right. Commissioner announcement. Commissioner Grogan. Um, I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Wilson. I just want to make a comment that it's wonderful, the corner of um, Bluford and Orlando Avenue in the rain the other day. It was so wonderful to. not to have a puddle. So thanks to all who were involved. It looks wonderful, and it is so functional. So all of us who travel that are greatly appreciated. Appreciative. That's it. Uh, Commissioner Burstner. I just wanted to say that uh, I'm happy that we're all lucky that this tropical storm passed us by with little or no effect. And I want to remind everyone that uh, the fire department is having an open house this Saturday from 10 until 2 p.m. at fire station number 25 on Blueford Avenue down here. It's going to be about hurricane preparedness. So let this tropical storm be a wake-up call for everybody. Make sure you come out and get the information that they're providing so the next time we have this situation, you know that you're all ready for it. Okay, Commissioner Keller. Uh, thank you, Mayor. A uh, couple of them. Uh, first one, um, on June 22nd, I will be having a um, town hall meeting out at the Eisen Center uh, for District 4. Uh, yeah. If you can... Uh, Notice that just in case any of the other commissioners or the mayor wants to come to it um, But we'll discuss what's uh, what's uh, of interest in the the city right now uh, That seems to be uh, what we're doing with downtown and uh, some of the crime spree. So um, We'll uh, we'll be out there uh, the 22nd will be from uh, 6 30 until um, 8 o'clock at night, so please feel free to come on out whether you're in the district or not um, and I'll have a flyer out or, or something on Facebook and uh, some of the other pages. I don't think we'll be doing a mailer. I think, we, I think between John and I, we killed all the mail, <laughs> mail buddy for, for some of the meetings. So uh, we'll put that out on the Facebook and uh, try to get it on next door and uh, things like that so that everybody knows. But please come on out the 22nd. Uh, the one other item that I have, uh, and that is that on... Um, June 13th and 14th, uh, there'll be the next set of downtown information meetings. So, oh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> so, I'll let the mayor finish that one since he's got, he's got that on his cheat sheet. So, uh, that's all for now, Mayor. Thank you. To go ahead and say what he was saying was, but we want to please remember to step, stop by our sketching sessions for the downtown master plan on Monday, June the 13th, and Tuesday, June the 14th at Lakeshore Center. The GAI team will be refining the master plan beginning at 9 a.m. on Monday and will make a presentation at 6.30 Monday evening, where we are happy to have three food sponsors. Tuesday's sketching session will be from 9 to 5 during normal business hours. That's 13th and 14th. So be sure to come see what's going on. All right. We'll move to the... Uh, oh, I'm going to bring it up now, Rob. On July the 5th, we talked about the uh, meeting, canceling the July the 5th meeting. So we need to find out, and let's go ahead and decide now. Do we need to vote on that? Yes, please. All right. Any comments on that? Or any? We um, talked about it at the last meeting. We didn't vote um, on it, though. We need, a, we need a motion. Yes. I'll make a motion to cancel the day after July 4th, the July 5th meeting. Second. All right, motion made by Commissioner Grogan, seconded by Commissioner Keller. Any more comments? If not, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, guys. All right, consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda items one through nine. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Keller to approve the consent agenda with one through nine and seconded by Commissioner Wilson. All right, no more comments, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. All right, Chief, public hearing. 
Number 11, Okoy Landon's Plan to Unit, unit Development, PUD. Uh, Planner Fabro. Good evening. Uh, just for the record, again, my name is Antonio Fabre. I was a reviewing planner for this. Uh, it's a vacation and abandonment of right of way and the final subdivision plan. Uh, typically, final subdivision plans come in a consent agenda, but in this case, we like to group it together so it makes a little bit more sense. Um, just for location wise, it's north of uh, Silver Star Road, east of Clark Road. It's sandwiched between uh, Lake Ohio Drive and Lake Shore Road. It, this is the boundary of the PUD, it's an aerial photo. And you can see the little bit jog in here. This is where the right of way is going to be uh, proposed to be vacated in this portion as well. Again, just to remind you, this is the uh, PUD. It was 50, 50 lots, single family residence. It's supposed to come in with ending with two quarter sacks and two sides. There has a breakaway gate over here just in case of an emergency. And there's going to be four commercial lots. Again, these are the four commercial lots. Uh, there are going to be some improvements later on when the, when the lots develop. And there's going to be a brick wall along this portion and, vinyl, and a vinyl fence over this fence and to the north. These lots over here are the ones that, uh, this is where the right-of-way has been, is proposed to be vacated. And this is half of that right-of-way. And they're using it for the lot depth. They're 50 foot wide by 110 feet long. Again, you can see the new proposed cul-de-sac. This part of this cul-de-sac that's existing now is going to go away. You can see there's going to be an open space for a park area. Part of the retention area is going to be right here. And again, this cul-de-sac is going to be there again for public purposes of turning around. It was reviewed for um, turning movements. Um, again, the turning movement for, for a uh, fire truck and turn and these cul-de-sacs, that's how it was designed. It was with double entries inside the uh, um, subdivision for in case an emergency, one side of the, of the road gets to be closed, the other side can still work. This is a petition that went out for um, the right-of-way vacate. is uh, Azalea Ranch Lane right-of-way vac vacation, which is this portion. At one time, it extended all the way through here. When this subdivision came over to uh, get um, uh, built, it also asked for it to be uh, vacated. So now we're just vacating what's left over. And this portion as well that they want, which is the old part of, um, of the Ohio Shores Road, how it came in, it got realigned. So this is just a remnant parcel right now that doesn't go anywhere. This is an aerial again of the uh, location to give you a better view of what's going on. You can see the right of way being vacated from here all the way down, and this is going to be vacated as well. This is an existing condition of the site, and this is where it's going to be vacated. Um, this is the portion that's going to be taken up for this development. This over here is all going to go away. It's going to be a uh, grass area. It's just going to be grass plain area. The sidewalk is going to get built across here, and it's just going to have a little montable curb to, uh, for maintenance vehicles to, to uh, do maintenance on the uh, site. This is the uh, sketch of description that is uh, attached to the resolution for the uh, right-of-way vacate. And this is the other portion. When we send out the right-of-way vacates, we send letters to um, all utility providers. Uh, finally, they got the sign-off and all the utility providers, they don't have no objections for the uh, right-of-way vacate. This is a, uh, I put this in here. Uh, this is from the Orange County Property Appraisers. They have uh, been commu communicating with us, and this is how it looks like the property is going to be um, divided out because this right-of-way is going to be divided and half of this is going to go to this original owner and then the other half, all these lot owners from here, from lot 10 to lot 6 will get a half of that right-of-way out there as well. This portion right here, um, according to the property appraisers, uh, they told us that this is supposed to revert back to FDOT. The applicant knows this. Uh, they've been communicating with FDOT. They're supposed to get a uh, 
probably a quick claim deed for it. The FDOT says they don't have any problems, but um, that's going to be one of the subjects too when the FSP comes along. Um, and you, the, FERC, the second part of your item for the Okoye Pines is, I mean, the Okoye Landings is the uh, FSP, the final construction documents. They're done 100% engineering. It is consistent with the PUD approval and the PSP approval. This is just some of the treatments around the, uh, the subdivision for the residential area. You have, um, again, you have this brick wall that ends up over here. And then you have the vinyl wall, that's the vinyl fence that starts all the way around. All of this over here will be brick. And this will be brick columns with, uh, with decorative metal fence. The entry level, the uh, entry features you can see is heavily landscaped. And it has their uh, entry sign over here. And again, the, you got the columns and the uh, uh, decorative metal fence around the water retention area. Over here, you have brick wall. You have a brick wall over here to the open park area for the kids. You know, this little tart lot area is going to be uh, it's going to be a brick wall, brick wall, and it's going to be landscape. Over here, it's going to be a brick wall, and then this is all uh, the the vinyl fence. And they're proposing to save a few number of trees that are in right in the right location. This is a graphic of what I was saying. This is the entry sign. This is the columns with the decorative metal fence. Um, brick wall is going to look like around the area. The vinyl fence is going to be behind the uh, uh, residential area. The breakaway gate and the pedestrian gate to connect to the commercial portion of the site. And this is their example of uh, um, uh, dwelling homes. Um, it was proposed and, and to the PNC to uh, the city PNC and the city commission with the uh, PUD and the PSP approval that's been approved already. Right. Staff recommendation for the uh, vacation of the right of way um, is um, it's pretty much just an approval for 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 it. There's no condition for it. The um, final subdivision plan. That's the one that um, we're recommending approval for their engineering and construction of it. But it's going to be subject to um, the right of way vac uh, approving of the right of way vacates first, which you guys are doing now, and demonstrating ownership of all the vacant tracks that they're saying that they're going to own. Uh, and then resolving the last remaining staff comments, which is very minor, but we want to make sure that they resolve those as well. Pretty much a staff presentation. Is there any question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, one question on the cul-de-sac by the parking uh, by the tot lot. Um, there's really no parking since you're not supposed to be able to park at a cul-de-sac. Is that how much of an issue is that going to be? Well, um, they're going to have to maintain it, um, and we hope they don't park in the cul-de-sac. But they're going to have to be the ones who are maintain that issue. If not, they're going to have to get police department out there. They can put some signs up. No parking. Well, I'm just thinking you've got a you've got a tot lot, and then you're making it difficult for the kids to actually use it because there's no parking over there for the parents to you know to, to drive over there with the, the younger it, kids. So I'm just but it shouldn't really be a far walk because there's three of them. There's three tot lots. Okay. It's not just one. There's three of them. One in the middle, one at one end, one at the other end. So it shouldn't be a long walk, even you know. All right. Anybody else? Question. Um, it, it wasn't clear, Antonio. The vacation, the six property owners to the north, the residential lots, are they all aware of the vacation that they'd be getting that additional property? There, uh, I, they, they have been notified. Okay. We're outstanding on vacation, so they should be aware that something's coming their way. Okay. So what if what, what would happen typically if three or four of them said we really don't want that? Um, yeah. What happens in that case? Um, I, don't, I don't. I don't know if they have a choice on that. <laughs> yeah, I think by operation of law, it automatically goes to them. I mean, I guess okay. they could work out a deal with the developer across the street to convey that property by quick claim deed to them and increase the size of the lots okay. on, the, on this development. But but that would have to be an agreement between the homeowners and that developer. All right. Yeah. No, I was just wondering if they've been notified that they have that extra property coming to them, and if mm -hmm. there's been anybody who really didn't want that. Thank you. I have one question. Go ahead. This is a gated community, correct? 
Is no, it, it gated? It, it's not gated. It's public. It's, it's not gated, but there are private roads, correct? I believe the it's public roads. It I, could, I, I, mean, I thought it was private. I'm, I, 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 I'm confused because I wasn't sure. When I open it up for public hearings, we'll let the developer talk. Are y'all, you want me to go ahead and open it up? Yep. Yeah, I am. All right, I'm going to open the public hearing, and we'll have the uh, developer can come up and answer that question. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, Chip Bryan, I'm the developer and the applicant. Thank you. Um, the current proposal, the, the community will not be gated, and the roads will be public, will be owned and maintained by the city of Ocoee. You're welcome. Anything else you want to comment to? I would just like to thank staff for working with us. Uh, we've obviously been at this for a little while. It was it has had some nuances with these right of way abandonments and stuff, and we appreciate everybody's cooperation. All right. If you'll just hang up there, we're going to bring it back and then open it up to the public. I'm sure anybody in the public wants to make a question. I've got a couple here. Uh, now we'll go with Jan and Manson. Just give us your name and address. Hi, I'm Jan Manson, uh, 2420 Ohio Bay Drive, Ocoee. Um, one of the homeowners um, involved in this, um, just to let you know, we have not been notified. This is the first written notification that we have received about the public hearing this evening. A couple things I want to ask about is um, the mature trees that are there, uh, we certainly don't want to lose those trees because they've been there a long time. We purchased our property approximately five years ago and we were told it was a conservation area and nothing would be built behind there. Um, so we took it as, as such. Um, I'm concerned about the trees uh, because that blocks a lot of the noise from Silver Star, and if we start losing mature trees and, and, and the beauty of our neighborhood, I'm, I'm really concerned about that. The other thing I'm concerned about is the existing power lines. Um, what, what's, what's in the plan for those? Are they staying? Are they going away? There's power lines that run along, well, what would be our property if they divide the property? Um, the power lines there. Are they going to be moved? Are they going to stay there? The other thing is why no brick wall with a continuance? Why a, why a, a, a vinyl wall? The, it seems like the brick wall would hold um, the noise back better than a vinyl wall and if they're going to brick half of it, why aren't they going to brick it all the way down? That's all I have, the, all the concerns I have at this time, and I'd like to have those addressed if possible. All Thank right. you. Tony, do you need to answer any of those? If not, I, we'll I can address a few of them. All right. <laughs> but um, for one thing, uh, all the power utilities have been notified, so the developer has worked out a deal, either moving the power lines or, or dedicating an easement, moving them on the ground. There have been all of the all of those been worked out. All the power companies have signed off. All the utility providers have signed off from, from this project. Uh, the second thing is with the right of way vacate, half of that, I mean those trees, the mature trees from 30 feet wide is going to be the property, it's going to be owned by the property to the north. So all those trees are going to remain. The developer in his plan saves certain number of trees as well with that fence. Um, typically, there's no buffer requirement between a residential and residential. You, that's why the, the developer is proposing a vinyl fence. You have all the mature trees and you have a vinyl fence that's going to be between residential and residential. That's why the uh, commercial portion has the brick because, like you said, it's more better and it handles a lot more because you want to protect the residents from commercial, but not typically you don't want to protect a resident from another resident's backyard. 
Um, I don't know, is there any other one, any other issue? Did he answer your questions, ma'am? Um, kind of, yes. Um, what, what does it mean about the What about the power lines? What Maybe he can probably elaborate a little bit more. Okay. Okay. No problem. Um, as Mr. Fabre indicated, the uh, utilities have reviewed this, and the answer to the question is it's going to kind of be a combination. Some of what's existing will actually be relocated or eliminated as a part of the development plan. Um, some of the existing facilities and poles, I'm not sure exactly where you live, will remain. But it's really kind of up to those utilities how, how that works since they own all of those facilities. So what happens is when we propose something like this, they look at it and they kind of decide what they require and that's essentially what we have to do. So it will be, um, what I can tell you is there won't be anything additional. It'll either be what's there will remain in some cases or it will actually be relocated underground or, or rerouted away from its current location. But there's not really any situation that would result in anything new on anybody's property on your side. Hopefully that helps. And no opportunity for a brick wall to help with the noise? It, it's, I, I certainly respect the question. That kind of stems from the city's code requirement regarding commercial separation versus residential. And what I can tell you, in the back of a residential property, it becomes a maintenance issue when you have a brick wall back there, whether those homeowners are going to want to own and maintain a brick wall, which is a more significant structure and expensive, versus a vinyl fence, which is something you would find more typically in a residential backyard. So I think that's the, the reason the city's code is written that way, and in my experience, it, it makes sense. You know, a brick wall that would be behind two houses is not really accessible for the, for the neighborhood association to get in there and maintain it. So hopefully that answers your question. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Brenda Singleton. Just one more item, too, I'd like to clear up. The notification that was sent out, yes, it's the right of, it says right of way vacates. Right. The reason the city of Accord doesn't get involved saying who's going to own the property because we don't have any say on that is the, there's another Florida law that does that. Okay. Um, I'm Brenda Singleton, and I live at 2400 Johio Bay Drive, the, um, the other end of our, of our subdivision. And the same, uh, same comment, we are concerned. I did add some pictures of, of the trees. They are very significantly big trees. And one thing to note is they said some of those trees are going to be left. But actually, if you walk back there, it, they're in the second 30 feet. If, you know, granted, we would be getting 30 feet, but it's mainly about, you know, having uh, the trees. Sorry, it's important. <laughs> um, Akoi's made the city beautiful by doing, you know, many trees and the medians and made it look very well. And we just felt like you all would understand how we feel about it, having been there for many, many years. Um, we all feel the same way. We, we're happy to get, you know, obviously a little more room, especially since a lot of the backyards of these houses um, have, have some of them are only 10 feet further back from their lanai. And so, you know, getting an extra 30 feet is nice. It isn't really about <coughs> trying to get more property, but those trees are actually on that other 30 feet. And, you know, if there's any, uh, we, we were just kind of looking at each other and we were talking about the, uh, the brick wall, it does, kind of seem like that would give us a little more of a definition as well. Um, you're going to maintain, you've got to maintain a vinyl fence <laughs> as well as a brick wall. Um, and a vinyl fence isn't going to last as long as a, a brick wall. And um, you know, I just want you all to know that uh, we don't want to give it up. We, 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 like, we like having um, that back there. And we'll, we'll hate to lose all those trees. It happens too often when developers come in and just mow everything down. I do represent. I, I mean, some of our some of the owners are not couldn't couldn't come tonight, but we've all discussed it, and it is important to us. So we wanted to let you know how we felt about it. In one sense, you're very lucky that there's a 30 foot right away in there, and plus the other 30 foot, which will be there. So, right. I mean, you're getting the 30 foot there, so that's a good buffer. 
And I, Antonio, on our other subdivisions, is there a fence? What's the, what's the deal on the fence with other subdivisions we're doing? Subdivisions typically do not have uh, any buffer side. requirements between no. residential and residential. It's between no. a change of use. I know that's typical, but we can't help but still say this is, we hate, these trees have been there for a very long time. They're huge, very tall. That's why I provided the, the pictures. And um, yeah, there are unfortunately on the other 30 feet. And so I, I don't know how many there, they said they showed a few. They're putting a whole lot more houses behind behind our houses. I mean, I see some, you know, trees marked on there, but you know, I don't, I don't know how they feel about the trees. <laughs> <laughs> I, I to that Okay. <laughs> Um, in spite of uh, appearances at times, we, as developers, we actually like trees a lot. Trees make property more valuable. Trees make people want to live in neighborhoods. We understand that. Um, the issue winds up being frequently with the requirements for subdivision design and drainage. Existing trees, and this, this is true, you know, if in cases where the city's doing work and when we are, existing trees are hard to save when you come through and do all those improvements necessary to provide public services and public safety. So we preserve the trees around the boundaries in areas where the grading can be made to work. And what we've done here, what's represented there is essentially everything that, that we feel can be preserved, uh, that merits preserving, that it is in an area that will not be disturbed as a result of that other work. So we're, we're make every effort. And then in areas where the trees cannot be preserved, there will be new trees planted, you know, in all of the required buffers, as Mr. Fabre showed on the plan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to speak yes, up about it. I think I have one more here. Ken, last, last. Hey, thank you. Um, I am Ken Lasseter, and, and I live at 2510 Johal Shores Road. Uh, I am the HOA president of Johal Bay HOA. And I had a question uh, regarding that uh, little asphalt road that uh, someone said is just going to go away. Um, what's going to happen there? Uh, I assume it's going to be grassed. Grass. And who's going to maintain that? That's already the city's. Okay, there's a, there's a little piece of land there that <clears throat> I understand is currently city property, and we have to uh, have our landscaper keep the grass cut on it. So. Well, what you need to do is turn that into the Public Works Department, sir, and they'll make sure it gets mowed. If it's okay. left off somewhere and somebody forgot it, we'll make sure it takes, if it's ours, they'll make sure they take care of it. All, All right. right. Rob? As long as we know what that is, I mean, I'll make sure it gets on the list. Uh, we may not know about it at this point, and your, your HOA may have been maintaining it without us knowing, but we, we don't have an issue with that. If it's ours, we'll take care of okay. it. It's that, it's the little piece that was created when Johal Shores Road was curved to go over it. It left a little, little area there. Um, there's a sidewalk down our brick wall that, along the retention pond. Is that sidewalk going to remain, or will that sidewalk go away as is the asphalt? because it's, it's kind of like offsite from the, uh, from the development itself and okay. we work with the developer uh, at the same time as, what would you, pr let me back up, what, what would you prefer? Do you want to have the sidewalk, but it's not going anywhere. That's, it's going to be an open, yeah. Air, yeah. open I, grass area. Yeah, as a, I don't have an opinion right now. I, I, was, I was more curious what was going to happen to that property. Um, and is it just going to remain an open grassy area that's, that's um, public property for any kind of public use? already so um, this will be just this will go this main entrance will go away and this this sidewalk is going to get extended and it's going to finish off over okay. here yeah, and it's just going to be a little what they call a driveway apron for the uh, maintenance vehicles who come in and FDOT still has to come in and maintain their stormwater pond um, so what was where well what area did you guys cover this area yeah this, this sidewalk along the wall it used to go straight all the way down the wall to the corner. And when they created this, it made a m much bigger open space and the sidewalk came out around this way and, and went down. Okay. Well, well, I'll tell the uh, director from the Public Works Department, Steve Coop, 
Okay, you gonna take care of that, or should I call about having? I'll tell him. And, oh, you can. You got. You filled out a name and card, right? So I, I need. I'll just get a copy of your name and telephone number so I can get back to him. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. We, is this a different issue about the power line, sir? We already talked about it one time. Come on, come on up to the thing, and uh, Mr. Perez, come on up to the mic. We've already discussed the power lines, but he wants to talk about them again. My name is Socrates Perez, and I am a homeowner in the subdivision, Lot 7. Right on my backyard, uh, there's a a pole with a transformer that with the 30 feet uh, additional that we will get, it will be a, a really weird safety issue there. And uh, having an additional 30 feet and then uh, still have the uh, power uh, transformer there. So I know we discussed that and, and it's been said that some of some of it is going to stay, some of it may be negotiated. So I'm concerned about not only the safety issue, but also the property value on a resale kind of uh, a deal of having just a pole right in the middle of the backyard with a transformer that once before exploded a couple of times. It, uh, the firefighters have been there before. So I just, for the record, once want to uh, emphasize on the on the issue of the power lines. Is, is that is that transformer within 15 feet of the end of your yard, or is well, it in? Right now, it's about a foot from the current property line behind. Behind, so it's, it's behind be, my property line at this point. So it's going to be in your property in the 30, once this yes, vacation correct. happens. So Antonio, there, is there a easement reserved with the vacate with this vacation? for the utility companies? Yeah, like the developer said, there was, certain, there was some that were taken out. Some are going to have an easement, I believe. Do you know specifically about the transformer? I, I can't specifically address the condition behind this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's right behind lot seven. But uh, I, I doubt that the power company will sign off on something that they know is going to be going to somebody else and not get that easement. That, that was my question. We're not showing any easements at all. We're showing a straight vacation, and that's what we're doing tonight is vacating that. So once we vacate that, that is this gentleman's property. I don't know how the power company can leave a pole but, on there without an easement. But I think, I think when we vacate the right-of-way, we reserve an easement. Okay, it's not that. showing on there, though. It's not showing think. on the... No, the, no we're not, we're not the reserving it because no, they worked it out. They, there's one easement for one company. I, don't, I can't remember which one. They're going to dedicate that easement back to them, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he's, he's saying that transformer is on the property. Yeah, he's I just want to make on. sure it's on the records for, for, for the time being that I'm concerned about. Uh, uh, Chip Bryan again, developer. Um, Mr. Fabre is correct. They, there was one circumstance where they actually did request an easement. So as a part of the review, all of the utilities did give consideration to whether an easement would be required. Um, I believe what's going to occur here, essentially, as a part of our subdivision design, obviously there's going to be electric, you know, water, sewer, all your various utilities, both public and, and private franchise, will be routed throughout our community. And so I think they're going to be pulling the service off of that reroute. And so in some cases, what's being eliminated is being eliminated as a result of kind of what we're doing in the other subdivision. Yeah, I, I think that, that makes sense. If, it's, if you have a transformer behind your house and they haven't contacted you for an easement for that, then that's, that's likely to go away. Perhaps the developer could get, get his contact information and look at that and uh, Thank let you him for help. The All right, that's the last citizen. All right. A lot of paper to come up. Yep. Okay. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Martha Lopez Anderson, 2438 Alcove Circle. I'm here on behalf of 
uh, the Silver Bend Homeowners Association um, as homeowner and president of the association. Um, just want to be on the record expressing our concern with uh, egress um, from Silver Bend. We have traffic right now going east, going west, people making U-turns, and now we're going to add um, the entrance uh, to this development is going to be directly across. So it's going to be a quite interesting situation, and particularly during peak times. I, I think that's the biggest concern is, is during peak times. Um, I, I've expressed this uh, concern to Mike Rumer, and again, just want to be on the record indicating such. Thank you. Is that a right in and right out? The commercial portion, yes, is all right in and right out. The uh, main entrance to their subdivision is, uh, is, I believe, it's a full, but it's a median that has yeah, a where's that? Where's that median? And on Silverside, there's a median that goes down. Where, where does that end in comparison to where? There is, in, in fact, an existing opening in the median uh, and, a, and a turn lane that's existing in that median. Right. So that, that condition uh, actually won't change. The thing that would change is the addition of our driveway on the north side of the road. Uh, diesel lane that's going to be coming in. They're extended, so it's the widening uh, uh, Silver Star. And the ones in the commercial areas, I'm all right in, right out because the median doesn't let them. Yeah, that's further down. Bit. Okay. No more public comment. I'm going to bring it back up to the podium. Any more discussion left on the podium? Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion, sub uh, approval subject to. Uh, let, let's take them one at a time. Yeah. Just, just the vacation of the right of way. Okay. No, that has no conditions. All right, then I'll make a motion to, to approve vacation of the right of way. I'll second. Motion made by Commissioner Keller for vacation of the right of way resolution and uh, seconded by Commissioner First. No more discussions. Let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. Now, address item B. I'll make a motion on that uh, subject to um, the that conditions that needed to be. Yeah. Subject to uh, the developer acquiring uh, ownership of all of the tracks depicted on the plan and resolving any outstanding staff comments. Uh, there is a second. No second. Motion made by Commissioner Keller on final subdivision plan, seconded by Commissioner First. Any more comments? If not, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you guys. All right. First and second reading, we have none. Let's go to item I, regular agenda, designation of voting delegate, Florida League of Cities, annual conference. I'll ben, I'm, I guess, Ben, I'm going to be there. I'll vote. Oh. Make a motion for Rich Firstner to be our. I'm going to be there as the mayor, so I'm going to. Well, then, that's fine. Here. That's okay with you, Presty Commissioner. I'll defer to the mayor. Not a problem with me. Is that all right? Consensus? Yeah, that's where we use it. All right. Staff action. It's just, just a point of order. I don't know if the League of Cities requires a resolution or something on that, do they? You, you might want to just, in case, take a formal vote on that. I think sometimes they want minutes to show who the formal appointee is, if I remember correctly. I think the correction is I don't think we've ever had our mayor attend. <laughs> yeah, he used, yeah. Yeah, he used, he used a long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. the first year that, that I was on the board, the long, mayor attended. A long time ago that he went to meeting. vote. Uh, wow. All right, I'll, I'll make the motion to That's appoint the mayor. I never even thought of that. Okay. I'll second it. Motion made by Commissioner Keller, seconded by Commissioner First, for uh, mayor to be the voting delegate. No more comments? Let's vote. All right. Anything else, Rob? No, thank you. Comments from commissioners? Commissioner Keller. Uh, Wait a minute. Did we pull the 13? Mary had 13 to deal with, yeah. Ooh, skip it. Update. Well, that's a question I need to ask the commissioners. Uh, Mr. Bracey's not here tonight. 
we want to find out if you want to pull this item and bring it back at the next meeting, or do you want to address it tonight? He did. Um, he did say he couldn't make it this evening. He had a conflict in his schedule. He did commit to he could be at the next meeting. It's up to commissioners. I have no problem pushing it back one more meeting, but I don't want to push it back after that. After that, we really need to have somebody up in in a. Washington lobbying for us because we really need it with some of the issues that we have up there right now. All right, Commissioner Firstner. Now I feel the same way. Do we know uh, That's what Mr. We Bracey's have. status or That's what we we have have we're waiting on him? Okay. Commissioner Wilson. No problem for sending it to the next meeting. Commissioner Grogan. Uh, I have no problem sending it to the next meeting, but I do have issues with uh, the whole merger yeah, no, issue. So okay, so we'll pull it. We'll pull item 13 till. Yeah, we'll move. Uh, uh, probably need a motion to move item number 13 to the June 21st meeting. Here's so moved. Motion made by Commissioner Keller. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Wilson. No more comment. Let's vote. All right, back to comments from commissioners. Commissioner Kelly. Uh, I've got one more mayor that I'd like to uh, bring up there, and that is in Forest Trails. They are looking, and, and Chief Brown, you might be able to help me with this, I'm not sure, um, but they are looking to have oh, uh, eliminate overnight parking in the, uh, in the subdivision. And I guess they were told they needed to have a referendum um, to in order to do that. Do they need a referendum you, or do you, they uh, I heard trails, I didn't hear in the beginning. The uh, forest trails? The forest trails. And you're yeah. saying on-road parking overnight? Right. They want to uh, They want to eliminate the on-road parking overnight. Um, I believe it's been uh, approved at one of their board meetings, but i got to double check on that because I think in the past, as long as they approved it, the um, City went along with that, but my question is: They said someone told them about a referendum. Is there anything that we need? No, to they, do they may have been referring to a uh, an HOA referendum or something. Typically, what we've required from them was minutes showing that they brought it up and had a vote in the homeowners association, and we look at the results of that before we'll send it to public works to, to put the no parking signs in. I'm just thinking. I don't know if we have. Anywhere in the city, we have no overnight parking signs. I don't know if that's even addressed in the there's ordinance a, anywhere. We have no parking signs. I don't know if we have no overnight parking there's, signs. Yeah, there's no parking. Some of the subdivisions have their own on-road parking. I think that's what they're trying to accomplish. Um, police and fire can do it for public safety reasons, but that's not one for us. So I, they may have just meant it needed to go in front of commission. I, I don't know. Would we need? Uh, is there any, I, and I guess maybe we ask the attorney on that, is do we, because we don't have anything specifically <coughs> saying no overnight parking anywhere, do we need an ordinance that would allow that, or is this something that if they want to do it and we so they give it our park blessing, on the it would work? road in the daytime, but they don't want to park on the road at Yeah, night. they don't I want mean, anyone parking overnight. Is it a they, public road? It's public road. What they're, what they're looking at is they're, they're trying to, they s believe that that will help cut down crime and all in the subdivision because but without any cars being parked on the road, there is, they know everybody lives in that, in that driveway, if you will. So this way, by eliminating the overnight parking, somebody would stand out if they, if they stopped in there. So what they're, so they're looking at it as a, as a, um, a safety benefit for the subdivision yeah, I don't as well. think that's addressed anywhere, Rob, overnight. I mean, yeah, just so no that's, That was the thought I had. Yeah, so I don't know, do I, do, would we need to do some type of ordinance on that? Because yeah, right I, now I, we have either no parking or. Right. Right. Or I, I think the, the police well, could do it on their own with, it, if it was a. Public safety public issue. Safety Correct. Issue. Um, uh, if not, then I think it would be the, the city commission could um, uh, make a decision to, to do that, to go ahead and, and restrict uh, parking on that particular road. We could do it on, on a particular road without. Would is we is that a gated community? I'm kind of a little no. loose. It's not even a gated community. No, it's not a gated It's community. just a city road that a, the residents want uh, want to have no parking at night. Right. So at least someone from the HOA has yeah. said that, yes. Yeah. 
Um, and I, I actually, th I, I, like I said, I have to go back and, and double check that they've actually approved it through there. But they have been um, probably discussing on and off having no parking on one side of the road for a long time. It's never, they've never been able to pull yeah. out whose side we, is it going to be parked on. We may so, be able to address it with just times, obviously not. Yeah no parking between this time and this time which would be all the road and that's what i think they're trying to accomplish yeah, they need just to see at, what they yeah they're just looking at overnight not to have anybody parked on the road in the subdivision um and basically it's a it's a circle uh we'd come in and one, one large well i take that back there's a couple of cul-de-sacs i think in there too can we uh, go back and look at research there's gonna be a lot of signs that would need to yes. go up too yeah i'd like to bring, bring this up in the commission if this is something that we're going to be doing to i want to look into this a lot more yeah this typically is, well, this well, is that's not why i'm asking is this um, <laughs> is this something that we need an ordinance on to allow and typically what we've done in the past if it's an hoa the roads are inside a mandatory hoa and they'll ask and they'll have typically one area within there that they're concerned about and they say you know there's par there's people that park on both sides and it's hard to get through and you know fire trucks can't get through so we'll go through, and if they do some type of vote, they take a vote, and, and you know, at the HOA meeting, we'll, we'll take that and we'll say, okay, that particular section will post um, no parking. We've not really gone through a whole HOA and put signs up. I mean, there's going to be a lot of signs up uh, in there. Well, it's, understand, we're talking a relatively small community. It's a uh, over probably a quarter mile in length of that. It's bigger than of the track. loop. Yeah, yeah, that's so, a lot of signs. And that, well, how often, that's one guess, out of I how many do we have in the city. How, how close or how, how distant do the signs have, have to be, be for something Steve like that? Kurt, he, I don't think he's here tonight, but mm -hmm. we need to research more. Okay. Do they have something that they've provided to you? or? Um, not as far as any suggestions of where to put the signs, but they have provided. They sent an email saying that they, um, they would like to have it as a uh, no parking overnight. And I guess they've already started have done it and most people are following it they're just looking to have the signs up there to to make it so that everybody knows let us report back on some of the issues All right. um, other than that and the, again just a reminder that on uh, June 22nd I'll have the, the meeting up at the Eisen Center and uh, that's all for now mayor mr. first chief Brown don't sit down <laughs> <laughs> One question, um, the new standardized signalization uh, for the gated communities, the access that yes. we're going to put into place, where are clear to enter? Yeah, where do we stand on that? What's the status of that program? I, the, I'm trying to think of uh, the deadline was, I don't, is it September? June? September, I think. It might be August, which is July. Or, um, so a majority of them, I, I don't know how many exactly, maybe about half have turned in their paperwork. Some have already been paid. Some have gone through and gotten you know, the information they need to move forward. It appears everyone is moving forward with it. Um, we've had great response. They are still within the deadline, so we're, we're moving forward with it. Okay, and who's who's the point man on that? that for us, it's uh, yeah. Lieutenant Wagner, and he just left. So, okay. um, and then fire inspects all of the uh, click to enter. So, there's a coordination of all of us. We sign off on the on the payment as far as for the city that comes from the police department, but it gets inspected by the fire. So, okay, it's a reimbursement. It's a reimbursement. Yep, okay. up to a certain amount by commission action. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thank okay. you. Yes, that's it. Nothing at this time. Mr. Grogan. On the 17th, we will, oh, wait a minute. This is, yeah, Joe. 17th is the Food Truck Friday, Bill Reese Park with a movie. And um, just, if you've been contacted by the um, people with uh, sending out the ordinances, our uh, code enforcement of people parking on the lawns, we are starting to get a little proactive on that. So, you know, please abide. There are rules out there about parking on your lawn, and uh, they're going to be enforced. So just be aware of that uh, and help out not park on the lawns. That's all I have. 
A couple items. The charter revision, uh, it's open for names till uh, July the 29th. So if you're watching on TV or we still have it advertised on the uh, line, it's open till the 29th of July. Orlando Avenue, we had a lot of uh, a lot of good comments lately, and I want to thank the staff, Steve Krug and the staff and the crews that worked on that. We caught a lot of flack during the construction. I just want everybody to understand that the roads are going to get worked on come uh, the new park we're doing with the new stuff on uh, Blueford Avenue, so everybody needs to get ready. Understand we cannot improve if we don't do some of that work. We have to do the road work before we can do the dressing up, you might say. So that's part of what the problem is. Everybody got a little aggravated because of having to go around it, but that's part of the deal. If you, if, and they did finish early, so we ought to be happy about that. But it, if you go by there, it's high and dry. So I, I know the neighbors are happy. Also, Jeff, Central Park. Did we not put cameras up there? We talked about these cameras at different parks. After all the work they just did up there, painting and all this stuff, I guess it was vandalized the other day? Yeah, we, we did have some vandalism uh, occur in that park over the, uh, the weekend. We do have uh, one camera in the, uh, the park, um, and uh, we are working with the uh, uh, police department to uh, uh, relocate that in, in a uh, more highly used area. I, I wanted to ask the commissioners, and the suggestion made to somebody was, to me was maybe close that park for a month just the basketball area, close it for a month, and it, uh, you see if, let them understand that they're the ones up there doing that. If they, you know, we might need to not take that away if it don't get stopped, because there's a lot of damage up there. I was talking to one of the workers today from the city, you know, that happened up there. So somehow or another, we've got to let them know that we put a lot of money out and do a lot of the things up there, but we can't tear it up. You know, they won't. We just we've got people asking for the other parks, which you know, mm -hmm. they have some revisions done to them. So if we're going to do that, we have to make sure we can keep some kind of control over these parks. So we need to make sure for sure we're going to put a camera up there. Yes. So. Steve Krug here tonight. Okay, I'll save that so he gets back. All right. Nobody else have any more comments to the good. We'll close the meeting.